Hello everybody, welcome to this new episode of Jan's Opening Clinic, Season 25. Number 3. This is the show where I answer the opening questions of Chess24 Premium Users to the best of my knowledge. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Here we go. Sorry about my voice. It's feeling, feeling a little raspy, is that a word? I'm not sure if that's a word, but that's not, that's not raspy. So AIS Thesis is saying, finally, the opening clinic is by far my favorite format on the site. So please keep it going. I'm hanging in there. Thanks, AIS Thesis. Hi, Jan. I want to learn the Lasker defense against the Queen's Gambit decline, h6 and knight e4. How is it doing these days? Are there any trendy or particularly critical lines that black needs to be aware of? In the position after 9 rook c1, do you play for prey for other plans with dc4, c6, knight d7, knight d5, or with dc and b6? After queen c2, however, getting e5 in does not seem to be feasible in the first place, so black will have to go for b6 and bishop b7 eventually. Do you think c6, winning tempo, um, or the immediate dc4 is more precise? Thank you very much in advance. All right, Lesker defense. And what do I have to say? Let's try to get there first. d4, let's say knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, knight c3, bishop e7, bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, short castles. First of all, I should mention, if you want to study a new system in this position, there is this trendy line that Karana and Anand have both played recently with good results. D takes c4, e3, and c5. So just throwing it out there, this might be an alternative system that you could be interested in. I'm not sure if it has a name or anything, but currently looks like it's fresh and promising. Anyway, back to Gordo Lesker. Still a very respectable defense. As far as I know, can't say I follow it on a daily basis, but I haven't heard any big news like Lesker in trouble. Fresh idea. So black goes knight e4, intending to exchange a bunch of pieces and then eventually freeze position. That plan does seem to work pretty well. Bishop e7, queen takes e7, and you mentioned a couple things. First, after rook c1, you asked which plan c6, followed by e5 or b6 later, I think I know which position we were talking about. So black goes c6 here, <clears throat> asking white to make a move. And the main line, I guess, is bishop to d3. You gotta be ready for these g4 moves here, which have become somewhat, no longer trendy, they were trendy like 10 years ago, um, somewhat neutralized, but you have to know about these things. As far as I know, g6 here, just, you know, stopping h5, so you can go g5 and g5, h5, keeping the king side closed, has a very solid reputation, black is okay. So I think what you were talking about is the position after bishop d3, knight c3, rook c3, you take on c4, bishop takes c4, knight to d7, short castles, and here black faces a choice between playing pawn to e5 and pawn to b6. I believe they're both doable, but if I had to choose, which I think I do have to, i go for b6 because it seems like positionally a bit sounder to me and the plan, at least to my mind, is somewhat easier to play. Bishop b7, c5 and gradually equalize. e5 I do think holds, but these positions after bishop b3, I... Just don't like them optically after e4, knight d2, knight f6, is rook c5 business, or starting with queen c2. I am not deep enough here to say they're bad or anything, but I don't really trust them as much. And similarly, bishop b3, ed, I think is a little shady. So I'd go with b6 when, yeah, I haven't heard of any great groundbreaking news here. The main line is something like bishop d3, c5, now they choose bishop e4 or bishop b5, I guess this is still the main thing. White tries to get a little pressure 
There's this Anand, this famous Anand idea from his match against Tupalov, which was it here? Went a little something like this, and Black claimed to have enough play for these weakened pawns with the bishop on the long diagonal, which is probably true. There is also the more classical way to play, which is putting the pawn to a5, just stopping b4 forever, and then trying to get the bishop out to one square or another. For example, rook c1, bishop a6. It looks to me like black is pretty close to equalizing here. So nothing to be too concerned about. And that is the plan that I would prefer. And then you asked about bishop e7, queen e7, queen c2. You mentioned c6 here as an option, but c6 I thought was bad here because of knight takes e4, no? d e, knight e5. As far as I know, white is better here. Queen b4 check, queen d2, stuff like that. Not a big fan. So I would not go c6 here, I believe. You should take on c3 and now take on c4, which I think you also mentioned. dc, bishop c4 and b6. Tending once again to go bishop b7, c5, knight d7 in one order or another. And I can't see any big problems here for black. I used to click around in these areas a little bit looking for tiny advantage. That's really not very much. I think I was checking stuff like this. Takes, takes, rook fd1, rook fd8. And now moves like bishop e2 or bishop f1. But if you want to play the Lasker, which at its core is a simplifying opening where you're intending to equalize, then I don't think you should be too worried about these positions here. Bishop e2, queen e7. C1, how does this go? Something like, some clicking like this I have, when, yeah, it's very little for what. So, as far as I know, and I'm sorry if I'm missing any big trends here, I haven't heard of any, the Lasker is still in pretty good shape. I have not seen that many developments, partly because people haven't played bishop g5 that much, and if they have, we've recently seen, I think, Magnus play bishop f4 here, or, as mentioned, Black players like Vichy or Karana have started experimenting with this DC4, which also seem to be doing pretty well. But yeah, Lasker, same story as always. Should be holding. It's not the most fun opening, but solid it is. So I hope that at least gives you some pointers, Mr. AIS thesis. Let's see what other questions we have. <clears throat> Sorry for my raspy voice. Conte Yellow saying, Hi Jan, great to finally have this show back. In the Sicilian defense, hyper accelerated dragon. Wow, hyper. Black is considered to be rather passive and mostly fighting for a draw against Marochi setups. Yet, if you were forced to play black and wanted a win, it's one of these questions where you're hedging first, like, yeah, I know, eh, you're not a fan, but if you had to, you tell me. Um, which line would you choose? More specifically, after 1e4, c5, knight, 3, g6, 3d4, cd, knight, d4. I'm not sure if you've seen the last episode, Conte Yellow, but I gave big speeches about e4, c5, knight, 3, g6, the white options there, like c3, bishop, c4, c4, d4, cd, queen, d4. So you might want to check that out if that's the mover you want to go with. Um, but moving on, d4, cd, knight, d4. Would you go to some Guggenitze system with knight c6? Well, I'm dropping all the names here. c4, knight f6, knight c3, d6, which should be 2, knight d4. Now which should be 6 or a5. Or would you choose setups with the light square bishop on c6? And we should g7, c4, knight c6, and so on and so forth. Thanks. Regards. Yeah, as you already mentioned, I'm not the biggest fan of either I would say and I think in the last I should learn how to say episode I keep saying it and I'm very self-conscious about that word so in the last episode I was talking quite a bit about e4 c5 knight f3 g6 and why I'm not a fan of this and what options why has that so let's put that on the board and try to answer your question d4 cd Knight d4, knight c6, c4. So the premise is I have to choose between the bishop g7, 
d6, bishop d7, and so on. And the knight f6, knight c3, d6 thingy. First of all, with white, I usually go knight c2 here, which I think is quite promising still. And you have to price that in if you want to go for these setups with black. You can start with knight d4, queen d4, d6, but then white isn't committed to bishop e2, so it has its downsides too. Still, if the choice I have is between this position and the one we'll get to later, I think I'm choosing this, mainly because it's a little fresher and the ways aren't that established. Also, I think Duda is probably the biggest name player who regularly gets these types of positions on the black side. He's recently been experimenting with a5. And also, from a white perspective, I'm always very happy if I get like b3, rook c1, stopping a4 and f3. But if the pawn gets here, I'm never that sure about the position. So I would go for this. I still, yeah, would do it begrudgingly because Conte Yellow forced me to choose one of two options. But I would, yeah, probably try to play this position, push the pawn to a4. I guess starting with a5 is somewhat more flexible than starting with bishop e6, even though it leads to similar play. Rook c1, and now pawn to a5, and I've always been somewhat confused about these positions. I'd still take white, but I'm not quite sure what goes where. The old lines with queen a5, f3, rook fc8, b3. Six. I'm not sure if this is the typical move order, but you get these positions a lot. Knight a4 is the main move here. Queen d2, king d2. I still see popping up in games of who does it and who sign off maybe. I think some Azeri guys go here. And I always thought this endgame was better for white, but I've recently seen, I don't know, Dominguez who sign off end very quickly here. So I don't know, maybe they think this is still playable. I thought both GF and EF gave white. Bit of an edge here, so I wouldn't be too tempted to play this with black, but the line does exist and it's possible. So yeah, I have some sympathy for this plan with a5 and a4, but it could be that that sympathy, sympathy is mainly based on me not really understanding the ins and outs of the position. And as mentioned, with white, I would usually go knight c2 here, so you have to be kind of ready for that as well. The other line you mentioned is like bishop g7. Pro of bishop g7 is now that after knight, now after knight c2 you have some other moves like queen b6, which could ask some questions. So knight c2 is a less tempting choice here. And, and after bishop e3, knight f6, knight c3, d6. Well, here, here I could once again play my knight c2 move, but my bishop will already be committed to e3, so not as great. Castles bishop d7. Here the problem is a tree move, no? I think that secret is kind of out and it's unpleasant for black. At least last time I checked. Like the old lines. How do they go? Queen d2. Hmm. Take, take. Bishop c6. Now f3 or bishop d3. I guess are supposed to be slightly better for white as well. But here, I don't know. I've never been that excited about the white side, so I guess those are playable. But this a3 is asking some serious questions, no? or recently it has been. Looks very slow, but it seems unpleasant for black. And the main line is, is this stuff, takes, takes, bishop c6, queen c2, a5, I don't know, maybe queen c7. Also move is a better try here, but how happy we are, I'm not sure. So a5, the big point was this rook a d1 and after knight d7, which looks strategically fine for black, but white is ready with his bishop g4. It turns out black is not in time to get everything he wants, because knight c5, that's some e5 business in the position. It's not very pleasant. White gets to take here. It's better to knight e5, there's c5. So yeah, this was an issue, I thought. And yeah, that's why I would not like to play this with black. Currently, things could change, not the biggest expert, and so on and so forth. But yeah, these lines I didn't like much with black. So, I won't give you this speech, learn a proper opening and all that. Um, 
Nah. Given the choices, I would go with door one, the Gorgonitsi system. Thanks for the question. Mr. Conte Yellow. Svart Smurf is saying, in the close Catalan, has Black found out how to best deal with Aronian's Knight A3 idea yet? Um, not a question that I think has been brought up often because I was not aware of a big panic surrounding this Knight A3 idea. Let's maybe put it on the board. But I thought it was more of a one, or he probably played twice, more of a two game surprise weapon as in, look, I can even play this legal move in this position than a serious theoretical trend. I could be wrong though, so let us let me try, first of all, to put on the board what I think you mean. Castles, castles, c6, and here the move knight to a3. The main move is queen c2, but knight a3, does defend the pawn, prepares rook c1. So it's not pointless, the big drawback is, fairly obviously. Knight on the rim is dim and does not have a lot of prospects. So black has some choices here. Knight bd7 looks very logical to me. I think some guys started with knight e4 when they want to force this bishop to f4 instead of e3. But knight bd7 made a lot of sense to me as well. Why was playing rook to c1? And here, Giri tried to force the issue with some knight e4 and then bishop a3. I, first of all, I wasn't sure if black just makes some random move here. Let's say h6. What white is up to? Because, you know, the knight is not great. And black can often play these waiting moves rook a8, bishop f8, or bishop d6, and ask white, what do you want? With the horsey here. Well, if white goes bishop f4, which is typical here, we would go knight h5 and go back. So h6, I believe, is a low theory possible quote unquote solution. The more direct way is to play knight to e4. They go bishop to e3 here, bishop f4. The bishop can get kicked by g5, so that's not ideal. So they go bishop e3. And now instead of Anish's bishop takes a3, my engine was saying queen a5 is a good move. And I usually do not argue much with my engines. It does look like a good move. Immediately putting some pressure on this knight. And also somewhat strangely, the plan is to go b6. If you go b6 directly in these positions, you normally run into cd5, cd knight b5. And all of a sudden this knight wakes up. So queen a5 followed by b6, not an idea you see very often. But one point is to gain more control over this b5 square and also prepare bishop a6 here. And it just seemed to work pretty well. I couldn't find anything for white. Well, queen b3, we also go b6. Once again, the difference is that now this knight can be, can be chased away. And I could not see any problem. Knight c7, rook a c8. So, that's two solutions. I like the one with knight e4, queen a5, because it's very direct. But also this playing a waiting move, I think, is decent. So, yeah, I don't think there's any mass panic around knight a3. It's just one more play of move that was a cool surprise for a game or two. But I do not think that now that people are aware of it, you will have the brightest of futures. Thanks for your question. Mr. Svartsmurf. Hmm. Let's look another one. Magmole. <clears throat> Magmole with a hot topic. Very fresh topic too. And one where I have not done the appropriate amount of homework. He's saying, Hi Jan, I'm interested in all the line in the Rosolimo from the white side. 
which is becoming popular among top players again. e4, c5, knight 3, knight c6, bishop b5, g6, castles, bishop g7, c3. Yeah, that's very, very trendy. As far as I can see, the trendy line is knight f6, rook e1, castles, d4, d5, e5, knight e4, and now setups with bishop c6 and bishop e3, as illustrated by the nice position game Smates Mamadov. Shout out to Smatesy board a few weeks ago. Slightly different move order, starting with knight bishop e3, was tested in Adams Sarich. 2019, which allows queen b6, bishop c6, queen c6. Which move order would you prefer? I'm also not sure why those games feature the direct cd d5 rather than cd cd and now d5. <clears throat> Can white pretend it's almost the same after e5, knight e4? Um, bishop c6, bc, bishop e3. Or is there a concrete reason why top players seem to prefer the immediate d5 nowadays? In another main line with 5e5, white scores well with the gamble continuation d4, yada yada yada. And one more recently, Adams against Mielis Palau. Are there improvements for black? Or is this just a very decent line for white? Sorry for the very lengthy question. Thanks in advance. Appreciate your work. Thank you, Meg Mole. All right, yeah, that's a big complex and a very trendy one. So let's see. What we can do, knight to c6, bishop to b5, pawn to g6. Here pretty much everyone used to play bishop takes c6, which is still the main line, but with both bc and dc being played regularly at the highest levels and black more or less holding their ground. Not too surprising that white players went for an alternative and this one was considered harmless for a long, long time, but... Now, as McMull has observed, is becoming a very hot topic. One reason why they start with c3, not rook e1, is that after rook e1, e5 is a fairly decent option. Well, after c3, e5, as McMull mentioned, there is this gambit, pawn to d4. So let's start with the first part of the question, which was around this knight f6, the traditional Recipe against it, rook e1, castles, pawn to d4. You ask why they all play d5 and not cd, followed by d5, that's an easy one. They do that because in this position the knight has access to the c3 square. Knight c3 is a good move here. Why would you allow that with black if you can start with d5? I should mention, starting with d5, not the only, playing d5, not the only move here. Magnus Castle recently played a6. After bishop d3, he played d5. And after e5, he went knight e8, which looked very passive. But if knight e4 here, the okay, game could get very interesting. So a6, certainly an option too. But d5 is still the main move. And white goes e5, knight to e4. And as Magmal mentioned, what has been a breath of fresh air in this area, which used to be considered just fine for black, has been these plans with bishop e3 and or bishop takes c6. Now which move order you prefer depends on your evaluation of this position. I think you also pointed that out. That was played recently in Anand Dubov. If queen takes c6 is no good and black has to go b takes c6, then you certainly should play this move order because if you start with bishop c6, bc, bishop e3, Black is by no means forced to play queen b6. He has all kinds of other options here, like rook to b8, pawn to f6, c takes d, followed by other moves, and so on and so forth. I don't think any of these lines are that great for black, but they are bonus options for sure. So the question is, is this just fine for black? And the truth is, I don't know yet. I haven't spent enough time. Dubov got a quick draw here after dc, bishop g4, Knight bd2, knight takes, bishop takes, and the game was drawn shortly after. But moves like queen takes d2 are very much options, and I'm not deep enough here. To tell, even in the game, I think it was after Anand had this heartbreaking loss against Caruana and Vikanze, you could argue that white could have tried a little more here. But yeah, that requires more research than I have done. At first sight, it also looked to me like knight takes c5 instead of knight takes d2. Could be an interesting move. So my 
gut feeling is that bishop c6, queen takes c6 should be holding for black. And therefore, the move that to be preferred is bishop c6, bc, and now bishop e3, which we've also seen in quite some games recently. And here, black has to start doing his homework. It does not seem easy. Rook to b8, there's this queen c1. Where people have won nice games here, no? Anish won a game. Kalan also won a game. I don't know. This seems like, yeah. It's a very hot battleground. It's a strange position because black has the two bishops. No obviously bad pieces. But this guy on g7 is currently not very active, especially on the queen side. And if the game opens up here, then white could just have more pieces on that battleground. Even though optically white has a quote-unquote bad bishop, black has the two bishops. So black should be doing great. It's not simple at all. And yeah, took a while for this to get trendy, but... Now that it is, makes a lot of sense why it is. <clears throat> I'm expecting more action in lines like CD, CD, F6, and white. Probably goes knight B2, but you could also make a case for H3, or maybe for queen C1, like for queen C2. There will be all kinds of developments here, but it certainly does feel like a very critical battleground. So. Black Rosalimo players have one more worry. And right now, I don't see any easy equality for black. One line that I think is interesting is the move you also mentioned, c3, e5, either way, when there is this gambit played by Adams and Caruana. Well, have they recently been in the same video? And going for this. And I think this also requires some more research. It looks very dangerous for black with bishop coming to d6 and then pawn to e5. But my engine did say that after a6, bishop a4, knight g7, bishop d6. I think this is all first line. b5, bishop b3, bishop b7. Things aren't so clear. Preparing knight to c8. So I would not be surprised if we see more action here. Or maybe I should just let my computer run a little longer. Because these positions, as mentioned, do look very scary. But at first sight, I could not find a win here for white. So it could be that this discussion is also far from over. But basically, yeah, make more. All I can say is, you're right. It's a very hot topic. And currently, it looks quite promising for white. The best I can see for black is, once again, this e5 and trying to hold these dodgy positions or just work harder on a solution here. No obvious one jumped out at me. Hope that helps. Thanks for your question. What else do we have? We have Moriarty. Is he still called Moriarty or is he called the Hot Priest nowadays? Um, he's saying, Hi Jan, I have a question about transpositions between the English opening and the Morozzi bind. I was recently white in a game that began at 3 g6, c4, bishop g7, knight c3, c5. And here I attempted to transpose into a Morozzi bind with 4 d4. The game continues cd, knight d4, knight c6, knight c2, and my opponent could have played bishop c3. He actually played knight f6, e4, and I reached my desired position, which I thought looked quite good. My question is, what do you think of the position after bishop c3? And do you think that 4d4 is a good move, or should white do something else? No, that's a bad move. Do something else. That is a known kind of... Well, trap is a bit strong, but move order device that black players can employ um, in order to trick you into that. So, usually they go c5 first, doesn't matter. <laughs> c4, bishop g7, knight to c3, and c5. <clears throat> and here d4, yeah, don't do that. You've mentioned all the reasons yourself. cd94, black has not committed to 
is not committed to knight f6 yet. So they go knight c6, and after knight c2, which we would like to do when knight f6, e4, transpose black back to the Marozzi line that I also like, as mentioned earlier. Black should absolutely play bishop takes c3 here. You could even start with d6, waiting for e4, but d6 allows bishop d2, stopping that. So I would certainly take here b takes c, and now d6 or knight f6. And these positions are maybe white is equal, but no more than that. These pawns are just too weak, and they're easy to play for black bishop e6, rook c8, queen a5 or knight a5. And it's just not something you want. I think white is equal by putting his knight on d5 very, very quickly. Some stuff like this, but certainly no more than that. Black has a couple options here. Uh, short castle is knight e5. Also, instead of bishop e6, at some point I think I have also playing with b6 here. It's, it's not a position you want. It's just two big weaknesses early on. I had something similar recently in my Bundesliga game where I could not believe my luck. I was... White against Grandmaster Naumann, a very solid player, and he played something like this, c5, bishop g2, knight c7. And here I was very tempted to play queen b3, which is a move when black probably plays knight c6, and now takes, followed by d3, when if the queen goes to a4, we would actually directly transpose to the positions we just talked about. So I was very tempted to do this with white, but then in the end I decided to wait for a move, play d3, and I was expecting him to play e5, when I was going to play queen b3, knight c6, and take, and play <laughs> this position we talked about, and now we start with queen a4. But instead, to my surprise, I played knight c6, and I could play this a tempo up, which should be really, really dangerous for, for black, and I managed to win quite quickly. So... Moral of the story, other than me getting in that brag, is do avoid that structure. Now, knight f3, g6 is often played by Grunfeld players trying to move orders away from our anti Grunfelds, which would be something like knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5. And it's a pretty clever move order if you do not go to e4. That's the way to punish it. After d4, knight f6, they're happy. After c4, c5, knight c3, bishop g7, they're also kind of happy because d4, as mentioned, is not great here. So the best white has in this position is g3, and this symmetrical English is not really everyone's cup of tea like this kind of stuff, where black has a big choice, bishop f5, e6, e5, knight f6, you name it, all playable moves. Therefore, yeah, the way to punish that move order is knight f3, g6, e4. Or if they start with c5, c4, and now g6, you are not... Sorry, I'm talking nonsense, by the way. They usually do go knight f3, g6, c4, bishop, g7, not c5. And only after knight c3, c5. Apologies. <clears throat> but yeah, it comes down to the same. So I believe this is the move, when after c5 we could be back to our discussion from the last show and also a bit earlier today about c3 or d4 or c4 here. But yeah, once you reach this position, here of course you can still play d4, when Grunfeld players will usually happily play knight f6 followed by d5. You can try e4, but here they go e5, which I think is also considered to be decent for black. So once again, the way to really punish this mover is to play 2e4 when black has to play something he usually doesn't want as a Grunfeld player. So I hope that helped. In general, yeah, you're correct. Don't play that d4 line. That's a trick many players have been hoping for with black over the years. Let's see if we have more questions.
We have physics. He's saying, hi, Jan, could you make a detailed series about the Catalan for white? Thanks and have a good day. Um, that's, an, that's an easy one. No, I do not know the Catalan very well. I have not played it hardly ever or like two or three games 10 years ago so I'm not qualified um, I believe the Avro books out there are pretty good material on the Catalan now and I will see if we can find someone one day to do a video series on it for me honestly I don't know it I am very much a oops sorry d4 knight f6 c4 e6 knight f3 d5 knight c3 or even d4 knight f6 c4 e6 knight c3 i did a video series on the queen c2 nimzo those are my areas but catalan sorry not qualified all right let's do one more question and then Wrap this one up. Hmm. Ya Pretend is saying, Hello, Jan. Thanks for doing this great show again and keep up the good work. Thank you. Sorry. My hope for this question is you to share a bit of your knowledge about the anti martial theory. To be more specific, I'm interested in the 8a4 line for white. I'm trying to make the 8a4, b4, 9d4 line work for white for a while now. Most of my opponents do not know or play the move 11 bishop c5 after d, e, d, e, knight, b2, as suggested in your series from 2014. Is it that old? Could be. On chess 24, and I get a nice position with white. However, most of the time top players are recapturing with a knight on e5 nowadays and i don't see a good follow-up for white in most lines could you maybe elaborate on the state of theory of both lines is a4 b4 d4 d6 d e9 e5 just equal for black and last one about but not least why is bishop b7 not played more often is there something particularly wrong with it the uh, only thing i can think of is that when the bishop uh, uh, sorry i lose patience when reading the only thing i can think of is that the bishop is somewhat misplaced on b7 so early in the game when answering with d3. You would help me a lot by answering this. Thanks and honest, Jasper. Let's see. Not sure how much I can help Jasper, but I do not have the not qualified excuse. It's the marshal. I know my marshals. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castles, bishop b7, rook e1 b5 should be three short castles and 8a4 which yeah i think is probably once we reach this position the most critical move and yeah i know c3 exists especially if white is looking for a full-fledged game now first let me address the last part of your question you mentioned the move bishop b7 why is it not more popular this is actually my recommendation in my chessable series where i did this e4 e5 complete repertoire for black um, you find it on chessable.com slash jan i think and there i gave this move bishop b7 which for me was a departure because in the past i'd always played these b4 lines and i would argue the same thing that after bishop b7 d3 this bishop is a little misplaced on b7 but after i had a closer look and also i was never too thrilled about these b4 positions and mainly because i was quite happy with this line mm. i switched to team bishop b7 and i believe many others have as well singiri play it grandelius play it there will be more convicts to bishop b7 converts convicts let's go with convicts um so yeah i think you're onto something there and now to the main part of the question what happens after b4 d4 yeah you should go d6 i should mention my main worry was never so much these d4 lines but more these a5 lines and now d6 mainly d3 
but even c3 I was never that sure about. But these types of positions, it's not like there's any particular issue move by move. I just never liked them that much with this double pawn. <clears throat> but you were focused on d4, d6, d takes e, and I kind of agree. Like, for a while d takes e was the hot move here because we thought, or I thought, I think that's also in 2014 when I did that video series, if it's that long ago, that knight e5, knight bd2 was an issue for black. But it looks like this is the main thing that has changed, that after knight takes e5, knight bd2, black now seems to be doing reasonably okay. I think the biggest reason is knight f3, knight f3, bishop b7, pawn to e5, knight to d7. This used to be considered just better for white after bishop f4, but it looks like black is holding here. Even though I'm not sure if I would call it equal. It seems like black is holding with precise moves, but it's still not a position I would be too thrilled to play. e6 is also interesting, by the way, but I think bishop f4 is considered the main test. Knight c5, e d, bishop d6, bishop d6, c d, bishop d5. And this we used to think was just better for white, but it does look like Compies are defending this after knight e6. Once again, I struggle calling it equal. Obviously, if anybody's better, it's white, but it does seem to be holding. There was some game, like Nick Wang against Aronian recently. So I believe that is the main new theoretically. Black players also start experimenting with moves like knight fd7, which always looked clumsy to me, but I do know that computers like this move as well. I might have played it once when I was trying to mix it up, but I was never a big fan of this. So, yeah, if knight bd2, knight f3 is not enough, then that leaves you with knight e5, d, e. But here, I do agree that this is a pretty decent version for black. And there's the usual rule of thumb. If we can, we should exchange the stupid knight on e5, which we've managed here. So, yeah, I kind of agree. But this is not very much for white here. Knight d2, bishop c5, queen f3, also bishop c5. You can play these types of positions, but it's it's hard to get too excited. So I think you figured out most stuff for yourself already. That after d e d e. Knight bd2, even if they know this bishop c5 move. Black has been getting into trouble here and there. Now this is Aronian versus um, Swidler, for example, where they discussed this line. Swidler had a bunch of games here. I talked in, in my video series about this in more detail, but where Black has to know his stuff extremely well in order to hang in there. Hmm. I'm just making moves. This is the game. Aronian versus Swidler. Where I think after rook f8, queen a6. The going already got tough. And he should have played some other move. Bishop b3. CBM probably black holes with perfect play, as in most major openings and lines. But white certainly has more options here, for example. You don't have to start with a5 in this position. Depending on starting with queen e2 or a3 or a5, there were always all kinds of nuances and differences. So for me, it was a little too confusing with black, that's why. Yeah, I think I would be team knight takes e5, but mainly I have shifted towards bishop b7, which it's just a little easier to handle. Of course, the bishop is somewhat misplaced, but we're also not giving up. These light square weaknesses, like in the b4 line. So where I stand is, I agree with you, a4, b4, d4, d6, d, e, knight, e5. Looks like black should hold um, a4, b4, d4, d6, d, e, d, e. Not a big fan. And a4, bishop, b7. I think kind of okay. a4, b4. I have not really been enjoying the positions after a5. Hope that gives you bit of an overview there if yeah I had to choose with white I would probably 
start looking more into this 8a5. Like d4 is fine, but currently it looks to me like 8a5 and playing these structures just a little more annoying. Thanks for your question. That is it for today. Thanks everybody for your patience. And I hope we all learned something. I keep saying this, but it's true. I learn something from every episode from looking at the questions. So it's certainly a useful format for me as well. And yeah, see you in the next one.